The Sydney Morning Herald says her playing is like an angelic music box. The Pianist magazine raves about her breathtaking dexterity and finger control. Having won silver medals at the 2011 International Tchaikovsky and the 2009 Van Cliburn competitions, Son Yarum is one of Korea's top pianists and dominates the global stage. 네, 안녕하세요. 저는 평창 대관령 음악제 예술 감독 손 여름입니다. After a four-year stint as the artistic director for one of Korea's best-known music festivals, Music in Pyeongchang, Son is taking on the next stage of her career. One that will have her pushing the boundaries of the art form that she loves so much and does so well. Meet our globalist this week, pianist Son Yarum. Welcome to the Globalists. Thank you. Um, it is really, really wonderful to have you here. I know you have a busy, busy season. I looked at your 22, 23 season. It is like, it is a crazy schedule. <laughs> um, what were the highlights for you this past year? Yeah, I was pretty much everywhere. Like, um, the beginning of the season, 2022, 23, I was in Australia for the mm, first time. Mm. Yeah, that was my debut stages in Australia in different cities. I was in um, Adelaide, Melbourne, Sydney, and um, Hobart in Tasmania. So I had a four-week tour in, in that place. I was very happy. And then I was also an um, artist in residence in mm. one of the um, Dutch orchestras. So called Hague Philharmonic Residency oh. Orchestra, it's their name. So I had um, five different concerts wow. in um, in one season with them. Wow. Um, yeah, and then I also had a album release, new album, uh, which was um, which was is that the Mozart one? Yes. Yes. Complete piano sonatas, um, eighteen of them. So I also had a concert tour along with the release. Yeah, and you just came off. Um, from the Deutsche Radio Philharmonic oh, right. um, concert. <laughs> yes. Um, right here, it's just a few weeks ago. Right. Yeah. How was that? What was that like? So we had seven different concerts in seven different cities in Korea. And I personally actually thought this would never happen because <laughs> initially it was supposed to be in 2020. Oh. Yeah, and then obviously COVID came yeah. and yeah, everything wow. was um, modified and then was postponed a few times. So I thought to myself like this maybe would never happen. And then it finally happened. So we were very happy. I played um, Rachmaninoff Concerto number no. three for eight times, including the concert that we had in Germany. Wow. So yeah, it was a very fun tour. And, and it's still not over. I mean, we still have a few more months left yeah. in 23. <laughs> so you have a few things left this year. Mm -hmm. um, you're heading back to Germany? Yes, I, I'm going back to Europe. I play a few recitals in, um, in the Netherlands. And also I go to Turkey and then I go to Spain. I go to Canada for the wow. first time. I mean, it's so busy for you. I mean, you're mm -hmm. doing, you're everywhere. You're doing so many things. In your span, in mm -hmm. your career, how how would you characterize mm -hmm. this period? This period being experimental. <laughs> experimental. Experimental. Yeah, oh. still. Yeah. But um, I don't know because um, 
Up to this point of my life, I think it was very fortunate. It was really, I think it was a very blessed life that I was just offered to do many things and invited to do this and that. And f from now on, maybe I just want to be more proactive and I want to maybe aim more things that I really want to do and mm. I want to focus more on what I really, really, really want to do. Mm. So you want to sort of take control <laughs> yeah. of, of where you're going to head to. Exactly, yeah. But as you're taking control, I mean, mm. you, you're, you're known as, as an artist. You talk about the different places mm. you've performed, but it's not just that. Mm. You've taken on so many different roles. You're <laughs> a performer. You recorded, you know, the 18 Mozart sonatas mm. just within a year. Mm. Um, you've written a book. <laughs> <laughs> I have. You, you used to write columns. Right. Um, you've also hosted a TV show for, for a long time in Korea. Mm. And at the, you know, at the ripe young age of 36, you've been an artistic director <laughs> for a major art festival. Mm. So for all of this, um, which one is Sonia Rum? I can definitely say I'm just a pianist. Yeah, I used to do all kinds of things, but as I just said, I was invited to mm -mm. to do this, and and I really uh, devoted all myself to all this. But um, now I feel like really I'm just a performer. I'm a stage pianist. Yeah. Nothing much more than that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I believe in a little bit of fate and karma. Mm. Um, it just finds you all these opportunities. Mm. But <laughs> When you think about it, though, why do you say yes? <laughs> <laughs> well, everything had uh, reasons, yeah, reasons behind. For example, when I first was um, invited to become a columnist, I was very happy because I was very happy to write, first of all, because music is something very abstract and mm. there's a lot of things which cannot be said and cannot be explained. Mm. And I had had kind of a um, thirst about this that mm. I yeah there are a few things that I really wanted to explain kindly to people but their uh, music is kind of really you just um you cannot explain out of this so when I was um, doing all these things in writing putting everything in writing I felt it was very satisfying I must say ah. yeah so there was, a, there was a type of communication you felt you wanted to do beyond on stage? Something like this, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then um, artistic director of a festival was a different thing. This mm. was, um, yeah, because I was always invited to play um, in a stage which was made up by other people. Mm -hmm. And I, I was always curious about like, what's going on behind. Yeah, uh, what goes into actually putting the stage yes, together. Yes, exactly, yeah. So that was also a very sort of almost like an opposite uh, work mm. from what I used to do, but um, it was really very another satisfying job. Mm. You say that all of these um, experiences sort of but led you, ultimately you're a performer. Mm. How do these experiences affect mm. you as a performer? I mean, you as a performer before these experiences mm. and now mm. after you've you've communicated through mm. um, words after you've actually seen, put a stage together mm. and experimented with different things on stage mm. as an artistic director. How is the performer's Hunyorum now mm. different? Of course, I learned so much. Um, after doing all these things, I, I think my sight became really much wider, broader, and um, I could see things that I couldn't see before. Everything has changed. But at the same time, I feel like I can really focus much more on my uh, real duty, which is performing. Mm. Because then now I really recognize myself as a performer, nothing more. Now I really feel like I found what I really like. This is I, what I like the best and I, I could do the best uh, out of all these things. So you've tried out everything that you sort of <laughs> thought you might want, you might be good at mm -hmm. or might want to do. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you found that, okay, on the stage is where I Sonia think that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is, is, that, is that what sort of went into your, your collection of the Mozart sonatas? Because I also heard that that sort mm -hmm. of came to you suddenly. Mm -hmm.
But when that chance came mm. to record something, mm. you chose Mozart. Right. Um, is there something about Mozart that is very um, dear to you? Mm. It is very dear to me for some reason. I don't think there's any specific reason. It was from beginning, it was like this. From very this, young is, age. this is where you played Mozart at the 2011 Tchaikovsky oh, um, right. competition. Yes. So it, it seems that you and Mozart have this thing. Yes, there's some connection, some relationship that I can't quite explain why, but I always felt really so close to it. And um, not only as a performer, but also as a listener. I always mm. felt like whenever I was hearing Mozart, I felt like this is, this is my music mm. and my language, sort of my musical language. And then also um, another thing has uh, changed me a lot was COVID. That mm. um, yeah, my view, my perspective, just general perspective in everything has changed a lot. Mm. And um, how how is that? How um, I just thought um, because before COVID, I was I was kind of a very timid and hesitant person. Mm. But um, after the COVID, I felt like I talked to myself like maybe there's no time that I will be completely ready for anything. Like, mm. yeah, so I thought like, maybe if I, if I feel like doing something then I should just do, rather than waiting for some really um, very ready moment. Yeah, also this recording came out in, in this way. Like I, I thought, yeah, I love Mozart and I, I could play Mozart and why not now? Yeah. Something like this. Y you know, it's only you that can do this. I mean, playing 18 sonatas um, yeah, and, and a relatively short time. I mean, some people take years to do this. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been listening to your recordings mm. all day yesterday. Oh, wow, um, thank you. You talked about you having this connection with Mozart. Uh -huh. I oh. heard that, that that recording was dedicated to your mentor. Oh, yeah, yes. Why, why was that dedicated to your mentor? Vardy. Vardy. That's his name, yeah. Yes. yeah. Well, because he's such a big influence to me as a musician and to me as a human being. And I just, um, I, I love him and I respect him in the highest way. And um, yeah, I mean, whenever I play Mozart or anything else, I really think about him a lot. And um, yeah, I mean, Mozart can be a composer of anything. I think anyone can describe Mozart in a very different ways, which is the most interesting part because I mean, if you imagine, let's say Tchaikovsky, Beethoven, or all these great composers, greatest composers, there are some characteristics that can be um, defined, but Mozart can be anything, I think. Mm. Yeah, that's an interesting part. And in this record, in this particular recording, I wanted to kind of emphasize um, him as an operatic composer. Mm. I think he was an opera composer than mm -hmm. any, anything else. Mm. So I wanted these Mozart piano sonatas, although they are in, uh, instrumental music, I wanted this to be sort of a mini opera. Mm, yeah. yeah. It, it has a storytelling type exactly, of, of yeah. um, theme. He, he does that very yeah. well. The, uh, theatrical, yeah, theatrical, very theatrical and, and, and very operatic. So you, when you went through the pandem pandemic mm. and saw that who knows if tomorrow will come. Exactly. Isn't, yeah. it? I this, mean, yeah, is, isn't that exactly what, what sort what was, of it tells people? Yeah. And that's how you took charge yeah. <laughs> of today. <laughs> yes. And maybe that's what I see in some of your projects. Mm. For example, that going home project. Oh, right. 
Um, what is that project about? Um, so Going Home Project is an orchestra that we created. I'm one of the founding members. Uh, we are like five or six group of people who, uh, we are all musicians. And uh, so this orchestra is an orchestra which was made up by musicians, not any other organizations. Or so any. they don't have an artistic director? No, <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any, anyone who's controlling us. So um, it's a very sort of free kind of organization. And um, the core members, core musicians of the orchestra is Korean musicians working abroad mm. and also um, non-Korean musicians who work or who used to work in Korea. Mm. So we wanted to make some kind of international type of an orchestra mm. here in, in Korea. Why is it called Going Home? <laughs> so this came up from actually the beginning stage of all this was from my idea. I think mm. wherever I, I was going to, like in any European cities or in any suburban areas of, of American states, like I go to some of the orchestras, I, I, I went there and I played with them and I always find like there are a um, few Korean members of the orchestra, musicians of the orchestra, who would always come to me and greet mm -hmm. me and say hi and, and would talk to me like so friendly and say, ah, I'm also from Korea and it's great that you're here and we're so happy to have you and, and all this thing. And I, it was somehow like I felt very sympathetic toward them. Mm. Yeah, it was something very easy to understand mm. how they might feel. Because you went through the same thing. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Like being away home and working there, and sometimes the struggles to be, you know, accepted in all of that societies and so on. And then somehow I started to feel like to invite all these people uh, back home and play for their home audience, for their family, for their friends, and and this was just one of the vague ideas that I had in my mind, and then. Somehow it was put into a realization. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And it's a very organic, I mean, as mm. you say, there's no conductor, there's no artistic mm. director. It almost feels like artists, performers are, are just able to do whatever, whatever perform, they want. Yes. Whatever they want. Yeah. So the, the control is in the hands of the performer. Mm. Yes. Exactly. So another way of going home, I guess. Going oh, back yeah. to your roots. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Gold medal goes to Sanjin Chong. In Mo Young. Goes to Yun Chan Lim. So um, you talk about meeting Korean artists, mm -hmm. performers abroad. Your global um, success was actually sort of like an early stage of how so many young Korean artists are now oh. becoming so famous. You know, they're winning international music competitions, you know, left and right, I think. Right. I think right now, I mean, there's not a single big international competition no. where Koreans are not. Mm you know, one of the top mm. um, prizes. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? I mean, <laughs> why, is this, why is the K-classic thing now <laughs> happening? 
It's just amazing. I mean, um, you just said I was one of the first generation. Yeah, I mean, looking back, I, um, this was about 20 years ago when I was um, going to my conservatory yeah. here in Seoul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was really just maybe one and only person who would um, go to all these international competitions. I mean, there are yes. other few, but just few. So when you were competing, you, you were probably the one or very many small number of Koreans competing. Very, yeah. yeah. I mean, there are Koreans, but I was the only one from Korea. Yeah, because there are mm -hmm. other people who are studying already abroad. But um, yes, I was only one from Seoul, yeah. Mm. So um, it's very different now and everyone's like really very successful mm -hmm. in all these international stages, competitions, and we're so proud. Mm. <laughs> but people must ask you, mm. why, why, yeah. why are they success, so successful? What's yeah. that, what, what is it? Yes, I was asked, asked to this question so many times and I, I cannot quite say why, but because it's a combination of so many things. I think partly because it, we are so competitive, like mm. we are generally very competitive and we um, also generally love music mm -hmm. so much and whole culture is really very welcoming for musicians and for, you know, all these things. And um, also concert stages, concert cultures uh, in this country, I think it became so different. You know, people um, that don't know Korea very well mm. um, and, and know Korea only you know, partly mm -hmm. saying it's 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 because of that harsh education, <laughs> uh, classical music education. Mm -hmm. Do you think so, or well, what do you think? I wonder because I really don't know much about how it is right now. But I wasn't really growing up in this way. My parents were. My parents were busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, yeah, they didn't have much time to take care of me each moment, and I felt very fortunate about mm -hmm. this because if my parents were like this, I would have not done this. <laughs> if they were tiger <laughs> parents, they probably I, I would yeah. have not done music. And uh, I also know a lot of friends who I would call successful these mm -hmm. days, uh, musician friends, Korean musician friends who are like me. Yeah, Th there I think there are more people like me than who grew up with, mm, yeah. This is strict right. um, protocol. Yes, yeah. so I really wonder, I think there has to be a balance between this and that because if there's no control, I mean, obviously there are some portion that uh, you have to do as a um, young musician, yeah, young student of music. Obviously I was practicing, yes. yeah, mm. um, I had a discipline and, and so on. and there's some yeah, necessity of this as well. So um, right now we are really just so proud of all yeah. this success. Yeah, I, I think you point out it is a combination yeah. of the discipline, mm. the dedication, the yes. effort, and maybe you know, a combination of the music scene, you know, of the, course. The, and then the DNA, and as you <laughs> say, you know, it's a very welcoming environment mm. for music, mm -hmm. arts, um, yes. and culture in Korea. So. We'll see. So, because you're the first generation, mm -hmm. and now we're, we're, there are many, many young Korean artists who are succeeding, but mm -hmm. also are now, right now, practicing really hard <laughs> <laughs> and wanting to become, um, you know, these classical mm -hmm. uh, music mm -hmm. stars. Mm -hmm. As one who've already gone through this, mm -hmm. um, what is one thing that mm -hmm. you would, maybe an advice? If I go back, to 20 years ago, I would tell myself to enjoy more. <laughs> enjoy more? Yeah, simply. Because I was, I was really just very, um, very cautious about everything. I thought there is certain way that I have to go through and somehow I felt really very straight about a few things. And now I feel like there's no certain ways, especially for artists. Maybe for every human being, but especially for musicians, for artists, because everyone has to create their own ways. That's how I feel now. So um, I think, yeah, for young musicians, they just um, enjoy their life and they, they have to come up with their own ways, not others' path. Mm. So after reaching a certain level, after mm. practicing? Of course. Yeah. You, have, you have to go out and sure. play. Yeah. <laughs> good advice, good advice, yes. Mm. You know, you talk about 
um, your your core now. Mm. You, you realize the performer, mm. the performer, the pianist, Sonia Rum, mm. is where you want to focus. Mm. What kind of performer do you want to be mm. recognized and known for? Mm. There are many things that I would hope for, but I think I want to be genuinely want to be a um, communicator, good communicator. So who speaks through music and who basically communicates with you through music, mm. from stage, off stage, in various ways. Mm. And I think I that's what I what I want to do eventually with mm. music. Well, you, you're already <laughs> doing that um, spectacularly, but uh, maybe who knows? In the future, there'll be other mediums you want to try out. Mm. You know, technology provides uh, many, many, many paths that you have yet to explore. Maybe. <laughs> you know, we'll look forward to that. Thank you. Yeah. And that's it for me. I'll be back next week with another globalist who's putting Korea on the map. Sonjie, out.